Hi, I am Jerome from Fastlane. Welcome to the series on CCI Wireless V2. In this short video, I would like to offer some suggestions for a basic lab setup that you could uh, build at home to train for the CCI Wireless Lab. As you know, the uh, CCI Wireless Lab is a journey that is built pretty much on three phases. In the first phase, you learn the technology background, then you learn the tasks, and then you get speed and good practices. What I mean by learning your technology background is basically knowing what you do and why you do it. That is done by reading configuration guides, white papers, attending Cisco courses. I listed those um, main courses you may want to attend, the CCN wireless, CCNP wireless classes. Also reading you know, Cisco books, uh, references and so on. So that's the first task to know what you're doing and why you do it. Then once you know that, you are ready to get to the second task, which is learning what they want in the lab and it's probably going to be complex scenarios where you would be doing things that you would not do every day configurations that are exceptions things that do not work together but might work together in some conditions and so on that is to say exceptions to the rule but you need to know the rules to know how you can expand from the rules and make exceptions and there basically the only way to prepare is to practice 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 and practice again and as, as I say here challenge yourself invent new scenarios try things fail them, understand why they fail, and try to find ways around to make them work. And then of course, once you know the technology by heart and you know everything you can do on these controllers, access points, etc., you need to master the time and the stress of the exam. Also, read between the lines of the exam to understand what the good practices are and what may be expected from you that may not be explicitly said in the exam scenario. So to prepare for that last phase, uh, you will probably need to run 8-hour lab scenarios, exchange you know, with peers or mentors so that you can get some uh, um, guidance on things that get you stuck or new ideas, new views, new ways of thinking that you didn't think before. But the main element of this journey is the second one, when you learn the task and you practice, practice, practice. For that task, you probably want to have at home a mini lab that allows you to train, train your speed, train your fingers on achieving configurations and every day do something new and repeat and repeat again until your fingers can configure things without you even thinking about them. For that you need a basic setup. You don't need much. You need to have connected to your um, ISP router, a basic switch, a layer 3 switch if you can, and a basic controller and a couple of access points and a laptop. Of course, the uh, controller can be something very simple. It can be a 2106. If you can't afford more, uh, you'll probably find a few of those uh, on sale now because they are ending of life but there are still enough uh, to prepare uh, for, for the majority of the tasks if you can have a 2504 that's even better if you can have a 5508 which is the controller you have in the real lab it's even better then of course you need access points and they can be very basic here again um, if you only can get all the 1240s or even 30s they are not end but you know they are enough to be configure in iOS mode, cap web mode, back and forth, and train on any type of a, a configuration you can think of, knowing that you'll be limited in not doing N, but you will not be testing N anyway in your home lab. If you can have an NAP 1142 might be a good choice. Of course, on your PC, you will also need to run the OCS 7.0 and ACS 5.2. For that, you probably want to run some VMware or VirtualBox type of program to be able to run images of those programs and be able to reset them to whatever state you want. On your laptop, you'll probably need to have some Windows, Windows 7, and you probably want to have AnyConnect. AnyConnect is in the lab, so it's a good idea to have AnyConnect and train on that tool. If you can afford it, it would be nice to have a second controller, because with one controller, there are some tasks that you will not be able to run. Among those, the mobility anchor is one of the most important ones. For mobility anchor, you need two controllers. So if you can afford a second controller, then you'll be able to run these 15% uh, tasks that you cannot run with one single controller. Also, if you're on a 2504 or a 2106, be aware that those controllers do not allow you to encrypt uh, data from access points, which is something you can do with a 5508, 
they also can't do per user bandwidth contract by which you limit the bandwidth on, on the user. You need a 5508 to do that. And speaking of mobility anchors, you cannot anchor on the 2504 or 2106. So if you get a second controller, it's, it has to be a 5508 or a 4400 if you uh, find an old controller. As long as you run code 7, you'll be able to run any feature you need, even though it's not a real 5508 like you would have in the lab. The interface would probably be very, very similar. On the access point side, if you can afford one or several 3502s and more APs than two, it's even more comfortable. It's important to be able to convert the APs back and forth between CapWap and iOS. That's something you need to really know. The 3502 can only be CapWap. It cannot be iOS. Well, you can do it, but it's not what you would have in the lab and that's not recommended. So it's better to keep it in CapWap mode. So if you can have a couple of 3502s or even one, that will allow you to experiment uh, features such as clean air, which is something that you can definitely expect um, in the lab because that's a big feature in, in the Cisco world. Then if you can afford even more, then you may want to add an 1811 uh, router on which you'll be able to run Cisco Unified Communication Manager Express, CUCME, um, and add a 17921 so we can train on, on voice. Um, and the more money you can invest in your lab, of course, the closer you can uh, bring it to resemble the uh, real lab. So you can add more switches, create more complex topology, add more controllers, so you can have a multi-controller scenario, more APs, and also add the mobility service engine if you can afford it, um, so you can train on the location features. But that's, I would say, the uh, high range uh, type of, of topology. If you can just start with one basic controller, 2106 or 2504, or if you can, even better, a 5508, and two APs, 1242s, 1130s, or if you can, 1142, or even better yet, one or more 3502s, then you have everything you need to work on 90% of the tasks. Then, of course, at some point, you may have to rent some lab time some from somewhere uh, so that you can practice 8-hour lab scenarios in a more complex environment. But this basic topology will allow you to prepare 90% of the task, and what is more important, get the speed you need on all these tasks to be able to face any case scenario, any variation from any case scenario, without fear. Okay, so let me show you what I have here. Um, my lab is pretty poor these days, but um, I kept the basic setup that I can show you, which is basically what we just described here. Starting with the access points, you can see it, uh, 1130s at the, uh, the front, and then those two are 1262s. They are nice because they are N and they can be iOS and CapWap. On the left, it's a 3500, which is only CapWap, of course, and the 1250 and all 1250, but it does the job, you know, it's a good AP. So, altogether, you know, I can have iOS APs and CapWap APs at the same time. Uh, I have three controllers right now. At the top, you see 2106, just below 2504. Both run 70, so you know, you don't need to have a 2504 if you have a 2106 somewhere. Uh, below, you see a switch where everything connects. And at the bottom, there is a 4402, which is a, a 4400, so I can do anchoring and everything. And it's also running 7.0, um, so you can do anchoring and all the things you can kind of do on the lower uh, models. Um, and of course, the switch is a layer 3 switch, so you can connect uh, the APs in different VLANs, do routing and switching, IPv6, etc. Below, you have a laptop, of course, two phones, 7921, 7925. Of course, a USB cable to play with the uh, with the, the phones. Uh, below, it's a router that runs UCME, a Comadre Express, uh, so I can play with a uh, with a uh, with the voice features, and all that you know is on the shelf and. What is nice is that um, I have also um, a hub, which is a small thing, but I love it because it allows me to capture packets everywhere between the AP and the switch, the uh, uh, switch and the controller, etc. Uh, everything connects to here, which is my, my home um, network, which is basically an ASA, ASA 5505. Um, um, so I can isolate you know, my, my network. And what is cool is that it's in the closet, by the way. So I close the door and, and there is no noise. So you don't bother your neighbors and you just have a couple of cables coming out uh, that connect up there to my... Uh, ISP uh, uh, network, uh, so I can VPN in from from the outside. I need to. Uh, my home PC also connects to the uh, uh, switch you saw inside, while the ISA uh, 5505. Um, on this PC, I have a couple of VMWares running, and you can see I have a static route defined that leads to my uh, network. So I have a, a connection to my controller there. And that's pretty much it. That's not a lot of equipment, but it's enough to keep uh, your fingers busy for weeks and weeks and weeks working on all the uh, features you can think of and everything you can see on, on the blueprint.
if you have a design, if you have a home lab, if you want to build a home lab and you have uh, issues and you want some advice on how to optimize it or how to set it up, um, do not hesitate to get in touch with me via any channel you can think of via here no, on YouTube or, or via my blog. I'll be more than happy to help you if, uh, if I can. I hope this was useful for you and I would like to thank you for watching.